This is Field Communications in Philadelphia. Park, park, park. Did you know Town & Country Shop in Lansdale has closed its doors and these doors will remain closed until 5 p.m. tonight for a special six-hour sale. Man size recliner slashed to $88. Early American bedroom reduced to $389. Colonial or contemporary living room dropped to $277. Six hours only tonight, 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Town & Country Shop, Lansdale, PA, 855-6866. This will be the largest furniture sell-off ever in Town & Country's history. Buck, 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 buck. Let Star Tours entertain you in comfort and style. Let us entertain you every fun filled mile. I took a Star Tour, I made new friends, and I had a ball. We took a Star Tour, saved money, and they took care of everything. I love the Star Tours. If they went to the moon, I'd sign up tomorrow. Let Star Tours entertain you in comfort and style. Sign up for your low-cost vacation. Montreal, Cape Cod, Washington. 220 fun-filled trips. Call Star Tours. Clark Gable and Charles Lawton star in the classic adventure story of Cruelty at Sea, Mutiny on the Bounty. Why are you giving your last command on this ship? We'll be men to get if we hang for it. Mr. Christian, I give you your last chance to return to duty. I'll take my chance against the law. You'll take yours against the sea. But you're taking my ship. Mutiny on the Bounty, tonight's movie at 8 on Channel 48. meteorite that is able to overpower the human will is Jamie Summers' opponent tonight at 6 on the Bionic Hour. so secretive about a vacation photo. Ah, beautiful blondes. They're not so hot. of Night is brought to you by New Formula Era, a new combination of powerful cleaners concentrated into one quarter cup, and by Zest, the deodorant bar that leaves no sticky soap film so you feel really clean. Can Zest make you give up your soap? When you discover the cleaner, feeling of Zest, you're gonna say no to your soap. Zest's bigger bubbles of deodorant lather rinse cleaner, so I feel cleaner. When you discover the cleaner, feeling of Zest, you're gonna say no to your soap. Zest rinses cleaner than any soap. Look, dip one lens in soap and water, one in zest and water. Rinse. Soap leaves a sticky film on the lens and your skin. Zest rinses cleaner. So I feel cleaner. When you discover the cleaner feeling of zest, you're gonna say no to your soap. Go back to soap. No. Nope. Discover the cleaner feeling of zest. When we set out to improve a great laundry detergent, we wanted to keep the powerful cleaners that work on ordinary dirt, that cut through food stains, that get out grease and oil, and add powerful cleaners that clean collar soil even better than before. So that's what we did. All in the concentrated quarter cup called New Formula Era. So effective, it cleans clean through. Watch Era clean through collar soil, taco grease, and motor oil. We treat only the top with a teaspoon of Era, rub, Run under warm water and look. New Era cleans clean through. 
That's the kind of power you get in Error's little quarter cup. New Era, power that cleans clean through. Skyler, Skyler, are you in there? Oh, Reed, what are you doing in here? Why didn't you answer? I don't know. I didn't hear you at first. I, I was tired. I must have fallen asleep. I repeat, what are you doing in Skyler's private study? Oh, Geraldine, it's all right. He said I could. How else would I have gotten the key? Knowing you, my dear, any number of ways. Can't keep anything from you, can I? Not if I can help it. <sighs> all right. So Sky didn't know I was in his study, but it's his own fault. He left the key out there in plain sight. And not at all likely it was in plain sight. But you'd have found it if he'd hidden it in outer Mongolia. Well, there wasn't anything interesting in there anyway. Raven, it is bad taste, bad form, and bad manners to snoop around someone else's personal thing. Now, I don't care if he's your future husband or not. Amy Vanderbilt would never approve. Please, please don't tell Skye. If you do, there'll be an argument before the wedding, and it's bad luck. I'll agree to that. If you will leave this room at once and return the key to its rightful place, wherever that may be. I will, I promise. All right. Now, I will meet you at the foot of the stairs in exactly one minute. And I will be tapping out the seconds until I see you descending the stairs. something else <laughs> you know Martine one of the reasons that I suggested that we have lunch together is that I wanted to talk with you about Jody yeah I don't want to sound like an alarmist but both Miles and I are very concerned well anyone connected with Keller Whitney <clears throat> is right to be alarmed well I think she's being pushed too hard by either Skylar Whitney or Gavin or maybe herself but whatever the reasons are, Miles thinks that she's going to reach her limit soon, and he's afraid that if she goes beyond that, she's going to have some kind of a collapse. Now, that is the opinion of a doctor, and not just an overly protective sister. Well, that sounds very serious. Oh, I think it is serious. It makes no sense to talk to Mr. Whitney. He is without an interest in such a thing. Well, if we could impose on you, I think that you might be able to help. Well, tell me how. Well, Jody admires you so much as a dancer and, and as a friend. And if you could talk to her, encourage her, and help her get back some of her old self-confidence, if you'd do that for us, Martine, we would be forever in your debt. Oh, you don't have to say that. Of course, I'll talk to her. You know, I think Jody is a fine little girl and worth for it. Don't worry, I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you. I knew it was a good idea the minute Miles suggested it. It's really like your Miles. To find mine, warm, compassionate. Yes, those are two things which help make him a wonderful doctor. Yes, I'm sure you just know how wonderful your husband is. Oh, yes, I do. In my life, I have been fortunate enough to meet someone like Dr. Cavanaugh. How a different thing would be for me. Yes, I Okay, honey. No, I, look, I just wrote it down so I won't forget. Get dressed at Bennett's. I'll uh, tape it to my forehead so I'll absolutely remember. Yeah. Is it a uh, nice dress? Yeah, how much did it cost? That nice, huh? No, of course you did. Yes, I'm sure you'd be the prettiest girl at the wedding. Look, um, star about the other night. I'm really sorry about... Now, wait a minute. Now, look, we have been over this several... She wouldn't do that. 
You know, this wedding is driving me crazy. It's costing me a fortune, and I'm not even sure I want to go. OK, Calvin, what's wrong? Just the usual. Just the usual day in the life of a cop and a cop's wife. I've got to remember to pick up a dress, no less now. Remind me, don't let me forget. She wants to wear it to the wedding tomorrow, and if I show up at home without it, she'll have my head. Sure. Right. By the way, who are you taking to the wedding? Nobody. I'm going alone, I guess. Yeah? Well, if you'd uh, like to take one of the beauties from the Whitney Dance Company, I could have Gavin arrange a little something for you. Ah, uh, no, thanks anyway. I don't mind going alone. No, really. It's all right. OK. Still, I think it's a, a waste of all that uh, masculine charm. Oh, it won't be a waste. I'll just share the wealth. I bet you will. I'm looking for Detective Tyler. I'm Tyler. And I'm Stoner. Who asked? What can we do for you? I'd like some information about an arrest you made last night, a young black man by the name of Leon Washington. Oh, that's, uh, that's our friend with the fresh mouth. <laughs> You'll excuse me, I was addressing Detective Tyler. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I, it's just my want to be helpful. Do you have the file over there? Yeah. Uh, here it is. What's it doing over there? Oh, couldn't resist it. It's uh, such an interesting case. Well, there is much to tell, really. Uh, Mr. Washington was part of an illegal gambling operation, which we raided last night. Uh, he was part of the catch. That's about it. That's about it. I'd like to see him, please. Oh, oh I don't think that's a very hot idea, lady. Why not? Oh, we've got a very angry young man down there in that tank. I think you should give him some time to cool off. I mean, he's so mad, he could be dangerous. He might even do, well, you know, bodily harm, and uh, that wouldn't do. I don't think that's very likely. Look, if you're his girlfriend, I have to tell you, you've made an unfortunate choice. This may come as a rather rude shock to you, Mr. Uh... Stoner. Right. But I am not his girlfriend. I am his attorney. What can you do with Anchor Hocking? Why, you can store it, pour it, fill it, chill it, make it, bake it. Anchor Hocking. Mug it, chug it, save it, microwave it, pie it. Come on, try it. We set the table. Most everything. Now Sears are... Clark Gable and Charles Lawton star in the classic adventure story of Cruelty at Sea, Mutiny on the Bounty. Why you give me your last command on this ship? We'll be men again if we hang for it. Mr. Christian, I give you your last chance to return to duty. I'll take my chance against the law. You'll take yours against the sea. But you're taking my ship. Mutiny on the Bounty, tonight's movie at 8 on Channel 48. That guy's lawyer? That's right. Now, I won't take up any more of your time if you'll just make arrangements you for me to see my... You mean as in his attorney? Mm-hmm. Now, my since car. when has Leon Washington been able to afford an attorney? I mean, I've known this guy from way back. He's always used court-appointed lawyers, never had any money, or so he said. You may find this difficult to understand in your savage official view of things, but money is not always the primary incentive, Mr. Uh... Stone. Yeah. But it helps a little. I mean, even a lawyer has to eat, at least so I'm told. Well, it depends on the circumstances. In Leon's case, there are other things to be considered. You know, if I'm not mistaken, the ink on this card is still a little bit wet. I think our friend here is pretty new to the uh, bar. Uh-huh. Fresh out of law school, eh? You can always, uh, read the signs. If you'll excuse me, please, I came here for some information about my client, Leon Washington. I did not come here for a personal opinion about budding young lawyers. Now, if you'll just Look, let lady, me... I told you all there was to tell. Now, Mr. Washington was a lookout for an illegal gambling operation, which we raided last night. He was there, we took him in, like all the rest. That's it. Are you aware that your client has a rather extensive history? Yes, I am. But what I would like to know is, did you make him aware of his legal rights? Oh, we read him his rights all right. You can be sure of that. It's in the records. Hmm. You're not going to try to get him off on some kind of a slim technicality like that now, are you? Acting as a lookout for an illegal gambling operation is a relatively minor offense. 
but with his record, it could go pretty bad for him. If he's convicted, he could be in for a long stretch because this would be his fourth conviction. Mm, I see they taught you a lot in law school. I bet you were even at the head of your class. I was. Well, and maybe they also taught you that all we do is make arrests and gather evidence. Everything else is someone else's province. In this case, however, I think uh, Mr. Washington's resting here is actually a favor to society, brief though it may be. I'd say that's not your province either. Perhaps not, but I am entitled to my opinion. And I think that uh, it's pretty obvious that Leon Washington is not a good person. He's a bad person. And it is for the good of the good people out there for us to keep the bad people in here. Mm -hmm. What you think overwhelms me with towering indifference. Now, before I go, I'd just like to say thank you very much for your cooperation and your courtesy, Mr. Stoner. Yes. And by the way, what did you say your name was? Bannister. No, her first name. Miss. Beautiful. Here's a little housewarming gift. Oh, get the glasses. Uh, use these. <laughs> Puritan oil. Puritan's part of our diet to fight cholesterol. And it makes food taste great. I always use corn oil. Puritan has more polyunsaturates than corn oil. It also looks lighter. It tastes lighter. You have excellent taste and gifts. <laughs> Puritan, a delicious part of your diet to fight cholesterol. You invite me over for a friendly dinner and look for I find another glass. Eddie, it's got lipstick on it. And just after this greasy pan. It's not my shade. Dawn will handle it. After those greasy dishes? Try it yourself. Mmm. Water doesn't feel greasy. Or my hands. And this glass looks as good as the first one. Dawn's great, huh? Now, about the lipstick. What lipstick? Dawn takes grease out of your way. Michael! You making coffee? The coffee was so delicious this morning. I wanted some more. Mrs. Olson, <laughs> he's never liked coffee that much before. You said Folgers is different. Sure. It's a special blend, the best I've ever tasted. And Folgers is mountain grown, the richest, most aromatic kind of coffee. You make great coffee, honey. I know. Delicious mountain grown Folgers. Car, I can't believe. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I had no idea that you might be my visitor. Good Lord, how could you... Dr. Bryson, I'm trying very hard not to hold a grudge because I remember the kindnesses that you offered when they mattered most. And if I can do that, then the memories will begin to fade someday. You must be very happy to be home with your family now. I, uh... I think about that sometimes. Yes, I am. Yeah, one of the few things that has sustained me here is the, the thought that at least you came to no serious harm. No matter what the change is in my life, my feeling for you remains unchanged. No, I have no regrets, no apologies for that feeling. It may be the only decent thing I've ever felt. Dr. Bryson, please, uh, this is difficult enough without... Oh, you, I, I, you're, you're quite right. I'm sorry. That, that was terribly presumptuous of me. It, it wasn't a plea for vindication, believe me. I know that nothing or no one can give me that. I'm... I'm quite prepared to pay for what I've done. Well, the reason I'm here is to speak on behalf of your daughter. Valerie? Yes. You, you, you've you seen Valerie? Yes. But how? Why? I, I don't understand. We happened to meet just by accident and had a chance to talk, and she seemed to want to confide in me. You can take an interest in Valerie after everything that's happened? I think the girl needs compassion. That's... That's really rather ironic. That... Compassion for my daughter should come from you. Dr. 
diversion I didn't think I'd have to explain to you. She's heartbroken because you refused to see her. No, no, please, please, don't, don't ask me to, to see her. I can't. You can't or you won't? Believe me when I say I can't. Now, what? please, understand that. I, I'm, I'm afraid. Of what? What? There might be some reprisal against her, or what, are you ashamed of your past? No, no, no. Lord, I shouldn't even be discussing this with you. I'm, I'm half crazed with fear for her safety. I, look, I'm not dramatizing this to enlist your sympathy. It's the truth. Look at this. I haven't shown this to anyone. I, it was left in my cell. When and by whom, I haven't the vaguest idea, but the warning is obvious. It looks like a sick joke. No, no, it's not a joke. It's a message. It's a threat. It's a sign that I must keep silent unless... unless I want them to get to Valerie. Dr. Bryson, who are they? No, right no, now. no, I, I can't say anymore. I've said too much already. I, I know I haven't the right to ask you for anything, but please, in the name of God, don't say anything to Valerie or to anyone. Now, it's the only way I can protect her now. I, I, I really can't see her. Now, the, the only thing I can do for my daughter is... Is, is stay away from her completely. Just take it easy, okay? Why don't you sit down for a while? All right, all right, I will. I, for a minute, I will take a breather, and then I will be on my way. I have a hundred errands to do for this wedding tomorrow, and then I have to meet with Geraldine and Raven. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty fancy affair. <clears throat> You're going to be the matron of honor, right? Yeah. Do you want to know something? I am going to be the matron of honor at a wedding where I have yet to meet... The bridegroom. <laughs> How come? I don't know. I guess the situation never arose. I don't know. Uh, I, I know about him uh, by reputation, and I guess I'm just presuming if he's Geraldine's nephew, Hello. he's... Hello. Is Sid's Cafe open for business? Hi, what uh, are you doing here? Uh, uh, no, uh, we're not really open yet. This is Sid Brennan. Do you remember her from East Meadows? This yeah, is Valerie right. Bryson. Oh, yes. Oh, Sid's going to be the manager and obviously the namesake. Sid's well, it there. looks great. I just thought maybe you were open for business because I saw two guys come in here this morning on my oh, way to work. They were just friends. Stopped in for a little coffee, a little conversation. Um, Gavin Wiley, has the dance studio down the block. Yep. And Calvin Stoner is a policeman. Yeah, and we didn't have any food for them either. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, uh, <clears throat> I'm beginning to get messages from my stomach. How about a sandwich? I can go around the corner. Mm. No, thank you. No. Me neither, thanks. Well, how do you like that? We're opening a restaurant, and mm. I have to go around the corner for a sandwich. <laughs> there ain't no justice. <laughs> see you later. Nice to see you. Hey, sit down. Tell me about your new job. How's it going? Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Exciting. We're doing a big wedding tomorrow at the Whitney Mansion. Oh, well, then I will see you. I am matron of honor. Oh, that's great. Mm. There'll be a familiar face in the crowd. I'm sorry Draper won't be with you, though. Me too, but I'm not thinking about it. Okay, okay. But uh, I wanted to ask you about Draper's partner, mm -hmm. Cliff Nelson. Mm -hmm. Well, he's talked me into uh, having dinner with him tonight. What? He is very <laughs> persuasive. So tell oh. me about him. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, he's charming. Uh, bright. Witty, or so he thinks. <laughs> he's harmless, though. He's harmless. He's just, he's just full of himself. So he seems on the outside. But I guess I can handle him. You know, I got another offer today. What? A job offer from a Mr. Graham Armstrong. 
He's with an international photo service, and they are looking for photographers who know Europe and are free to travel, and the salary they're offering, it's not interesting. It is downright irresistible. Mm. I had to think twice before refusing. You turned him down? Sounds like a dream job. Oh, but not to me, April. I have done too much traveling already. And I, my father, no, no, I'm going to stay right here. Yeah. How'd this guy find you? I honestly don't know. That's a puzzle. I wonder where he did get my name. Peggy, look. Wow, an axle. A hard move like that deserves some soft trident. Can I, Mom? Okay, as long as it's trident. It's good. And four out of five dentists surveyed recommend sugarless gum for their patients who chew gum. What if I do a double axle? You get the whole pack. <laughs> Trident sugarless gum. Recommended by moms like me who care about teeth. Enjoy cool, refreshing Trident mints, too. Every day all over America, it's the Battle of the Burgers. Hey, everybody's leaving. You need a burger you can brag about. Add Lipton onion soup mix. Onion soup? Why not just add onions? Lipton adds more. It has a special blend of seasonings and toasted onion pieces that turn hamburgers into... Mmm, a super onion burger. Hey, here's a burger you can brag about. Win the Battle of the Burgers. Soup up your burgers with Lipton. Jamie Summers is pitted against the powers of a meteorite that is able to overpower the human will. Tonight at 6 on the Bionic Hour. Then at 7, Jerry's suffering from another broken romance, which means that Bob's again giving advice to the lovelorn of the Bob Newhart Show. You know, you have a final fitting on your gown, you and April. Uh, I have to meet her at 2.30. Don't worry, I will be there. Well, I have to go and call the caterer. He's hysterical because he has so much to do in so short a time. He was crying the last time I talked to him, so he asked me to call him back. <laughs> now, please, Raven, don't dawdle. I am leaving here at exactly 2 o'clock, with or without you. And you can just wear your old black lace tomorrow, for all I care. Before you open that soda pop, stop. Think about Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid? With those fun, fruity flavors kids love. Yeah! For about half the price of soda. Half the price? Right. And Kool-Aid has vitamin C. Mm, soda doesn't. So not only do kids love to drink Kool-Aid... Moms love to serve it. Right. If the question is Kool-Aid or soda... Make Kool-Aid. Yeah! Make the smart choice. Make Kool-Aid brand soft drink mix. And the winner of the cream pie contest is... Sally Ward! Not cream pie. Dream pie! What's the difference? See, dream pie's really creamy. It's higher and lighter than plain cream pie. Mmm! Hard to make? Easy. Take prepared dream whip, add two boxes of Jell-O instant pudding and milk, whip it, pour it into a pie shell, then chill. Mmm! Great cream pie. Not cream pie. Dream, dream pie. pie! From Dream Whip Whip Topping Mix and Jell-O Brand Instant Pudding. Tomorrow night at 8, Captain Cousteau and the crew of the Calypso search the Caribbean Ocean for sunken treasure on the undersea world of Jacques Cousteau. Then at 9, Channel 48 presents the mystery of the Andrea Doria. Stay tuned now for Three's Company. in Philadelphia.
back to gentility. What's old is what's new. Come back to our beauty. We want you to join us. Come back to our people. We made it for you. Come back to hospitality. So make it Jamaica. Come back to our bounty. Make it your own. Come back to tranquility. Make it Jamaica. Come back to romance. to the way things used to be. Make it Jamaica again and make it your own. Make it Jamaica Your new island has become unbearable tonight at 7.30 on All of the Family.